The J-7 is neither a cutting-edge combat aircraft nor a game-changer in the region, but it is not wise to ignore it on the Asia-Pacific chessboard. As the weapon detector, we're now investigating the JH-7, the backbone of the maritime strike capability of the People's Liberation Army Naval Air Force. The JH-7 is the mainstay maritime strike force of the People's Liberation Army Naval Air Force, or shortly PLA and AF. But this aircraft, whose NATO reporting name is Flounder, is also operated by the People's Liberation Army Air Force, or shortly PLAAF, for deep strike missions. Even though it could become fully operational in the early 2000s, the origin story of the JH-7 goes back to the Vietnam War. During the Vietnam War, the US F-4 Phantom II proved that the new generation multi-role fighters were more efficient than the old school bombers. So, the PLAAF realized that the Q-5s and H-5s no longer had real combat value and demanded a new combat aircraft to replace them in 1973. The US President Nixon's visit to China had already created new opportunities. So, Beijing thought that the development of a fighter-bomber like F-4 in China was possible with Western technical support. However, it was too early for this cooperation dream. The 1974 Battle of the Paracel Islands proved that the ground support capabilities of the existing aircraft were insufficient. So Beijing decided to proceed with the program alone and initiated the study phase during which the Tornado, Jaguar and Su-24 were deeply examined. In June 1976, representatives from various aircraft factories were summoned to Beijing to discuss the project. Shenyang offered the specialized variant of the J-8 called JH-8. Nanjan presented the Swing Wing Q-6. Similar to previous Chinese combat aircraft, these two were based on Soviet design. But Xi'an thought differently and decided to work on a new aircraft called H-7 based on the design of the Western counterparts. During the same years, the PLA and AF began to seek a new maritime strike aircraft to replace its own Q-5 and H-5s. At first, developing a single fighter bomber was seen as a logical move. But these two service branches had different requirements. The PLA and AF desired a multi-role fighter with a side-by-side -side seating arrangement and fair air-to-air -air combat capability. On the other hand, the PLA and AF required a pure-blood maritime strike aircraft with a tandem seating arrangement. It was enough to have air-to-air -air missiles only for self-defense. The 1982 Falkland War ended this debate. The Argentine super attendants with the Exocet missiles caused a remarkable impact on the South Atlantic. Thus, China prioritized the maritime strike aircraft, which would be more crucial for defending the mainland. Beijing authorized the program on April 19, 1983, and after a careful assessment, it chose Xi'an's H-7, which was now called JH-7. Initially, China planned to equip the aircraft with the WS-6 engine. But due to the poor performance of these turbofans, it bought the Rolls-Royce Spade 202s, which were also used by the Phantom FG-1s of the Royal Air Force. The five prototypes produced until 1988 used these engines. The JH-7 made its maiden flight on December 14, 1988. The PLA and AF received the first pre-production examples for trial purposes in 1994. They were equipped with the licensed production variant of the SPA-202, the WS-9. But the unfamiliar design caused many problems. Two JH-7s crashed in 1994 and 1996. After necessary corrections were made, the aircraft could reach the operational level in 1998. Yet. The PLA and AF demanded additional improvements after 20 JH-7s were delivered and then the production was put on hold. These aircraft, which had a three-piece windscreen, were equipped with the Type 243H multifunction radar. This radar could detect ships at a maximum of 175 km and fighter-sized aerial targets at 75 km. They also had the Type 9602 noise jammer and the Type 265A radar altimeter. During this period, China tried to acquire the Su-34s from Russia, but Moscow refused to sell them. So, the 603 Institute, 
which is today's China Aviation Industry Corporation 1, began to work on the improved A variant in 1999. This institute entirely designed a new version on the computer and made over 300 changes to the aircraft. For example, the JH-7A has a new single curvature and 22mm thick frameless plexiglass integral windshield with an angle of nearly 29 degrees with the horizontal line. The front seat is lowered by 30mm while the rear seat is raised by 30mm to improve visibility. The A variant has wings with different leading edges, large ailerons and flaps, which provide better control at low altitudes and speeds and improve maneuverability. The aircraft has a lighter and stronger airframe than the JH-7, which increases weapon carrying capacity. Also, the number of underwing pylons is increased from 4 to 6. Thus, the JH-7A can carry 4 anti-ship missiles instead of 2. The aircraft has two new large color liquid crystal multifunction displays and head-up displays. It is fitted with the BMKJ-8605 noise jammer, the Type 271 radar altimeter, the Blue Sky Navigation Pod, and a fully digitized fly-by-wire flight control system. The Type 232H radar of the JH-7 is replaced by the look-down, shoot-down capable JL-10A Pulse Doppler radar in the A variant. This radar enables the aircraft to fire laser-guided bombs and Ha-31P anti-radiation missiles. The X-Band JL-10A has a detection range of 104 km. It can track 15 targets and engage 6 of them simultaneously. China tested a domestic helmet-mounted display on the JH-7A for evaluation, but current operational aircraft have not been fitted with the system yet. The JH-7A made its maiden flight on July 1, 2002 and became operational in 2004. According to Jane's All the World's Aircraft 2004-2005 edition, China planned to fit the JH-7As with the SF-18 radar absorbent materials. But we couldn't find any further information about this claim. The improved JH-7A2 variant with enhanced air-to-ground munitions and carrying capabilities was first observed in 2019. But the development of this version probably goes back to 2014. The JH-7A2 was officially unveiled at Chuhai Air Show in 2021. It has a more advanced radar with a longer detection distance. The JH-7A2 was developed based on the experiences of the previous JH-7B variant, which had many design changes. But China decided to terminate the program in favor of the J-16. Some sources on the internet claim that China is working on a stealthier variant of JH-7, also called JH-7B, but there is no official confirmation of such a project. The export variant of the JH-7 is the FBC-1 Flying Leopard, but no foreign country has chosen the aircraft yet. We should note that some South Korean sources claim that during the visit of Kim Jong-E in 2010, he asked for 30 FBC-1s, but China rejected the demand. It is known that some JH-7s are converted for electronic warfare attack missions to accompany maritime strike groups. In 2013, some Chinese officials stated that the development of a carrier-based variant would be possible, but there has been no known effort since then. The JH-7A has a length of 22.34 meters, a wingspan of 12.71 meters, and a height of 6.58 meters. Its wing area is 52.3 square meters. The aircraft's empty weight is 14,500 kilograms, while its maximum takeoff weight is 28,475 kilograms. Two 91.26 kilonewton Xi'an WS9 Chinlin turbofan engines provide a top speed of Mach 1.52. Its service ceiling is 16,000 meters, in other words, 52,000 feet. The aircraft's range is 3,650 km. The JH-7A has one 23mm twin-barrel Gusha 23L autocannon and nine hardpoints. It can carry a 9-ton ordnance. The aircraft can be equipped with the PL-5, PL-8, PL-9, PL-12 air-to-air, -air, KD-88 air-to-surface, YJ-8, YJ-82, YJ-83, C-704, C-705 anti-ship and YJ-91, Ha-31P, LD-10 anti-radar missiles 
and conventional and guided bombs. Many sources claim that the combat radius of the JH-7A is 1650 to 1760 km with one in-flight refueling. But it does not have in-flight refueling capability. So its combat radius is probably no more than 1000 km. With half an eye, having no in-flight refueling capability may seem a big handicap for a modern maritime strike deep strike aircraft. But since China uses the H-6K and H-6Ns for long-range missions, the in-flight refueling capability is not essential for the JH-7As. The PLA-NAF and PLAAF operate this aircraft against the targets in a relatively closer range. The JH-7 is a specialized maritime strike aircraft which we have not seen in Europe since the end of the First Cold War. On the other hand, before the 1990s, the Royal Air Force had Tornado GR-1Bs and Buccaneers. Some German Tornado IDS aircraft belong to the Marine Fliege. The 34th Fighter Aviation Regiment of the Polish Naval Aviation Brigade operated the MiG-21s for maritime strike missions. The SH-37 was the maritime reconnaissance and strike version of the Swedish beauty Wigan. Yet, the military planners in the West Pacific still believe in the importance of specialized maritime strike jets. The FCK-1 fighters of the Republic of China Air Force are also quite capable ship hunters. This tradition began in Japan with the Mitsubishi F-1. The Japan Air Self-Defense Force now has the Mitsubishi F-2s. And China operates the JH-7s. Why? It is simple. These countries cannot pose a threat to each other without crossing the seas. The first line of defense for China, Japan and Taiwan begins far beyond their coastlines. The JH-7A is not a cutting-edge stealth combat aircraft with super cruise ability, but it has a considerable electronic warfare capability and a reasonable weapon carrying capacity. Since it has a limited combat radius, it would operate under the protective umbrella of Chinese fighters and interceptors in a possible war. So, the JH-7's capabilities are enough to be an efficient maritime strike aircraft. Due to the shape and position of its air intakes, many assume that the JH-7 is a copy of Jaguar. We partly disagree with this assumption. The Jaguar and the JH-7 are considerably different in size. Also, their electronics and weapon carrying capacities are not comparable. Having similar lines is not enough to qualify as a copy. If it was, we should define all jets with canards and delta wings as a copy of the Kafir. We can trace the B-2's design to the Horton HO-229. But who can argue that the mighty bomber Spirit is a copy of this German fighter? Yet, we think that the design of the Jaguar partially influenced the JH-7. However, not Jaguar, but its Japanese copy, the Mitsubishi F-1, is more likely to have impressed the Chinese. After all, these two aircraft were designed for the same mission. According to our analysis, the JH-7 is not the ultimate game changer in the region. But in skilled hands and with a little luck, this aircraft still have the potential to play a crucial role in a possible war in the region. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.